Hi, in this anatomy series, I'm gonna to talk to you about spinal mechanics, and in particular, of a lumbar spine. Uh, this is taken from a chapter that I wrote on the pelvis and SI joint. Um, so you're more than welcome to, to, to browse the book on, on Amazon or on my website. Now, in terms of mechanics, people sometimes say to me that it's old school. And I say, well, fair enough, because it originated from a guy called Robert Lovett in 1903. And there was another guy called Harrison Fryatt in 1918. So when you think about, I'm doing this video in 2018, so it's at least, over, at least 100 years old. But when these people had said it's old school, I say to him, well, what's new school? And no one really gives me an answer. So I always think whether it's right or wrong, and for me it's right, that we have to have an understanding of how the spine moves to then do something about it. If you get taught nothing in terms of motion, how can you truly assess and then treat and then be effective if you're not really taught an initial concept? So whether you think it's old school or not, yeah, I still think it should be taught, especially for osteopaths, chiropractors and physiotherapists, where they learn about the movements of the spine. And then you can make up your own decision. 1903, Lovett said, if we had a straight rod, which we don't, okay, but imagine we got a straight rod as a spine. If we were to induce a bend to the left or to the right, okay, yeah, to the right, or side bend to the left, then he says there is no axial rotation. But then what we do know is that we don't have a straight rod, we have a bent rod. We've got the primary curves of the flexion. Think about when you're in a fetal position. Before you were born, you have one flex curve. So that would be the kyphosis of the thorax and the kyphosis of the sacrum. But when you were born, and then you stand and walk, you develop the other curvatures. So now we develop the secondary curves of the lumbar lordosis, and then we develop into the cervical lordosis. So now we've got two flexion curves, sacrum, thorax, and two extension curves of the lumbar and the cervical. So now we've got a bent rod. And what Lovett found now is, is that if you bend a bent rod, then according to what he found, it induces axial rotation. And he talked about side bending to one side has coupled motion potentially to the opposite side. It does depend on what position we are in. And then Harrison Fryatt, an osteopath in 1918, talked about the laws of spinal mechanics or the principles of spinal mechanics, and that's where they've sort of stuck. He also talks about neutral mechanics in terms of type one and non-neutral mechanics in terms of type two. Before we discuss the different types, we have to discuss neutral. Now neutral, if you think about exercises like Pilates, everything is focused on the neutral spine. People say to me, am I lordotic? And I go, yes, you probably are. Am I Flex, have I got a flat back? Have I got a posterior tilt? Yes, you probably are. So these words are typically non-neutral. So if you are hyperlordotic, i.e. the pelvis is tilted and the lumbar is extended, then you are in non-neutral. If you've got a flat back with a posterior tilt, you are in non-neutral. So neutral has to be between the two. What it means is it idles, it's not in flexion, and is not in extension. So it's idling between the two positions. Now, according to Fryatt more so, um, because he did further studies, he says that, imagine I'm a vertebra. This is the spinous process. This is the transverse process sticking out from the side. If I'm in neutral mechanics, if I side bend, let's say, to my left, we induce a coupled rotation to the right. So side bending left induces rotation to the right, and side bend in right induces rotation to the left. We already know from the studies that rotation within the lumbar is only governed to one to two degrees. So we don't really have much in a rotation axis. So to get a bit more movement, as we rotate, we can side bend. 
As we rotate, we can side bend, so it induces more motion. Let's recap. <clears throat> Spinous process, transverse process. Side bending to the left, rotation to the right. Side bending to the right, rotation to the left. That's what we call neutral mechanics, also known as type 1. But when what they also found is, if you place yourself into non-neutral, i.e. you extend into the lumbar, or you flex, then that induces non-neutral mechanics, which is now type 2. And what that means is, imagine if I take myself into hyperlordosis, yeah, or I extend back, if I side bend to my right, according to Friot, it rotates to the right. If I side bend to my left, it rotates to the left, which makes perfect sense. Because if someone throws me the ball and I reach over, I will side bend and rotate to my right, which is a type 2 mechanic. And if I catch a ball to my left, I will side bend and rotate to the left. That also goes for flexion. If I bend, I flex, and I rotate, and I go to side bend, it picks something up, I am now in non-neutral flexion. So I am flexing to the left, or I am flexing to the right. And then the vertebra will side bend and rotate to the same side, which is known as type 2 mechanics. So basically, type 1, which is neutral, induces side bending and rotation to the opposite side. Whereas if you're in, say, flexion, or you're in extension, if I'm in flexion and I'm rotating, I will side bend and flex and rotate to the same side, which would be type 2. So just to recap, Robert Lovett, 1903, where he discussed the straight rod and then the bent rod, and then further on from Harrison Fryatt from 1918, and where he talks about the laws of spinal mechanics in terms of neutral and non-neutral. And there we have a very brief discussion on mechanics of the vertebral column.